The next lab you'll be completing is Chemical and Physical Changes Part 1. Matter is frequently undergoing changes, and if the change the matter undergoes alters the physical properties but not the chemical properties, we call that a physical change. But if the change the matter undergoes changes both the chemical and the physical properties, meaning a new substance is made, we call that a chemical change. In this lab, you'll be working with a partner, and while you and your partner are sharing supplies, each member of the group should record their own qualitative and quantitative data in their lab notebooks and turn in individual lab reports. Lab safety for this lab starts with the Bunsen burner, which I have right here. A Bunsen burner will produce a flame in the lab. It has a base, which is on the bottom, a gas control valve, which allows a small amount or a large amount of gas in, and the barrel of the Bunsen burner, where the flame will be produced. Attached to the Bunsen burner is a long hose. One end goes on the Bunsen burner, and the other on the blue gas valve in the middle of your lab bench. Before I can turn on the gas valve, I first need to get a striker out of the lab drawer at the end of the lab bench. This striker pr will produce a spark, which will ignite the gas coming out of the Bunsen burner. Right now, the gas valve is perpendicular to the handle, which means the gas is off. But if I turn the handle until it is on top of the gas valve, then the gas will be on. Before I turn on the gas, though, I want to make sure long hair is tied back and any strings that might be on my clothing are tucked away and any loose pieces of paper have been pushed to the side. I'm now going to put on my safety goggles to protect my eyes. I'm going to turn the handle of the gas valve until it is on top of the valve. And when I do, I can hear gas coming out of the Bunsen burner and I can smell a little bit of it. I'm going to squeeze the striker on top of the Bunsen burner to ignite the flame. Whenever I want to turn the Bunsen burner off, all I have to do is push the handle of the valve perpendicular to the valve in the closed position. I can then unplug the hose and put the Bunsen burner back in the cabinet where I found it at the end of the lab bench. In addition to Bunsen burners today, we'll be using corrosive chemicals. We'll be using sulfuric acid. Corrosive chemicals can cause damage to your skin if they come in contact with your skin. You should be very careful with corrosive chemicals. If you get corrosive chemicals on your skin, wash your skin underwater until all of the corrosive chemical has been removed. Part one of this lab is an instructor demonstration, which I will do in the lab hood. You, while I am doing the experiment, you will observe and record qualitative data in your laboratory notebooks. After you've watched part one, the instruction demonstration, you are free to complete parts two through five. Parts two through five do not need to be done in any particular order. You can do them in any order. You can use your time most efficiently by doing parts that are available. If another lab group is using the supplies for the part you want to do, go do another part and then come back and do that part later. At the end of lab, if you have time and you would like to repeat any of your experiments, you can do so to collect additional data. Before you leave lab, make sure to dispose all of your waste into the labeled containers in the fume hood. None of our, the chemicals we produce today will go down the drain. They will all go in the designated containers in the fume hood. Part 5 will produce laboratory waste in a Ziploc bag. Do not open the Ziploc bag in the lab. Instead, take the closed Ziploc bag and put it in the container in the fume hood. When you have finished the experiment and you have put away all of the waste in the designated waste containers, you've returned all of the borrowed equipment from the cart, from a shelf or from a lab drawer, you can lock your drawer, wipe off your lab bench, wash your hands, and leave